Just like most acronyms on software engineering, the CAP theorem is something we engineers deal with on a daily basis even before this thing was given a label and a name. The CAP theorem stands for consistency, availability, and unpartition tolerance. And even if you don't know anything about this, I guarantee if you work with distributed system, it just makes sense. When I explain what this means now, you're gonna say, I'm saying, duh, of course. But when you when you just read the acronym or the definition of CAP theorem, you will get so confused until you put it in an example. And that's the goal of this video. Let's just jump into it. Welcome to the Backend Engineering Show with your host, Hussein Nasser. And the CAP theorem, guys, is very important to help you as an engineer, as a backend engineer to be specific, to make better decision on your distributed system. If you have a distributed system, even if you don't, it's kind of good to know because despite the name and, and the attachment of this theorem is attached to distributed system and network system, you can essentially have some version of that at a single node. I'm going to explain that as well. In order to explain the CAP theorem, we have to explain what it stands for. So it stands for consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. So the first thing here is consistency. And, and consistency differs from the consistency in ACID a little bit here. What we mean by consistency here is a consistency in read. So if I write something to a system and, and Treat the system as a black box here. It could be one node, could be 700, right? If I write something and turn around and read it, or someone else read it, they better see my change. That's what a consistent system is. Very simple definition, okay? Y you might think now, who's saying, okay, uh, isn't all systems consistent? Not really, <laughs> right? If you, if you have like a master and a bunch of replicas, okay, or Redis caches, for example, bunch of cache or memcached, if you write something to the main source of truth, it takes time to propagate to the rest of the nodes. And in that time, although you actually committed and the client who issued the right says, share you got it it's written the read to the other replicas or the other cache node or the other things might not get the latest change as a result you get inconsistent system so that's what consistency is okay so when you get the same result you're consistent when you don't you're inconsistent i know some people say eventual consistency and all that stuff but you can add eventual to literally anything and it becomes true. Hey, my system is not is wor not working. It's failing. Well, well, we're eventually available. Just wait. Your system is not really performant. Well, oh, don't worry. It's not, it has a lot of load now, but eventually it's gonna become performant. Just wait. It's eventually performant. That's that's my system. Eventually, because since eventually, you can add eventually to anything. It doesn't mean anything. I I don't I don't like this term at all. Right? If you're inconsistent, you're just inconsistent at this moment. Don't add eventually to it to make it better. Hmm. I know a lot of people disagree with that, but that's my opinion. You can have yours, of course. So let's talk about the other one, availability. Availability is when you wanted to issue a write or issue a read, your write succeeds always and your read always succeeds. doesn't matter if you get a wrong result or, or old result and consistent. It's just, hey, you're available. You get something. That's why people add caches here. The moment you have caches, you're available, but are these information up to date not really but i favor availability that's what, what people mean I, I favor availability of inconsistent and nothing wrong with that you can make design choices based on your really requirements if you think about it so we have consistency availability and the final one which is the most confusing term here is partition tolerance and if you're if you work with databases and you heard the word partition here do not confuse it with the actual database partitioning it has nothing to do with it and i made this mistake now, partitioning here is is when you have distributed system when you you have multiple nodes and they cannot talk to each other that's called a network partitioned that's what it really means they cannot talk to each other there is a possibility of failure in partitioned network so when you hear the same partitions that means there is a possibility of failure. So partition tolerance, hey, 
I know my system is partitioned and there is possibility of a failure in communication. Let's say you have a master node and you have replicas and the replicas or the master has to phone to the replicas, right? In order to issue the rights. If there is a possibility if a failure in the network, your network is partitioned, your system is partitioned. And you might say, uh, I can tolerate partition because I have partitioning in my system. I might have failure, but I'm going to decide to tolerate it. Or you can decide, no, my system cannot possibly be partitioned. There is no chance and, and wo I won't have partitions at all. That means you're a single node. I have a single beefy machine and there is no other node. This is this just when you look at that, this is just one thing. And when I write to it, there is no partition. There is there is there, I'm not talking to anything else. Another choice is, hey, I, I have a gigabit Ethernet connectivity between this machine and this machine. So I don't really is I don't consider this partition. You can you can you can you can make the decision that you're not partition. But when would you have networks, especially in the cloud where everything is virtualized, software defined networking and whatnot, you're gonna get partitioned. And when I say partition, you gotta get failures. You are there is a chance. There's a tiny bitty mini chance to get partition. Right. So now now that we understand what consistency, availability, and partition tolerance, that cap theorem. Now let's actually uh, put it to test and, and let's put it in an example here. So in, in actual, this is how the theorem goes. If you have a possibility of a partitioning in your system, then you can either have consistent system or available. You cannot have both. That's what the theorem states essentially. So let's take an example of how what does that really mean let's say you have a, a master node here which takes your rights and you have two read replicas or you can say it's redis caches or whatever right so we have two replicas secondary nodes if i issue a right here so my system just by looking at this my system is networked as a result it is partition tolerance i'm i decide is hey I'm going to decide to tolerate partitioning. I'm going to decide to tolerate failures. And as a result, I get, I'm going to get a choice. What kind of choice? Let's continue. If I, if I issue a write to my master node, right, I need to update the replicas. And I get two choices here. The first choice is I can immediately, the moment the write comes to the master, I can acidify it and, and commit it to the actual primary node so i am acid in that node it's completely acid it's completely committed and i can decide to return immediately and says client share you get you got your right i can decide that so my system is available so i don't care if my my replicas get updated after one second or, or 10 seconds i I am available i wrote and i got commit so asynchronously on the back end i'm gonna update those replicas on the background whenever I have the time, whenever I feel like it. So you're available. As far as we know, the right is available. Good. And because it committed immediately and it's fast. The reads are available because I can read and immediately get a result. Are they consistent? No, you can never guarantee consistency here because the moment you write and commit, the time it takes to propagate that, even if it's milliseconds, someone could have already issued a, a read and got the old results. And as a result, one example is back in the day. So back in 2006 is one exa good example of this. Well, YouTube had this idea of replication with MySQL. So when you update your profile on YouTube, you write to your profile, it goes to the master node and you immediately refresh the read goes to the replica and you don't see the change. So the change that you just made, you don't see it and you freak out. And uh, the lead of YouTube actually explained this because the read is going to the replica and you're not seeing. So the system was not inconsistent, but it was available. That's the choice they made. Now, so in a case of a partition tunnel, if there is a failure, right? You don't care. Hey, I, I, I can get failures on the back end. These asynchronous methods can fail and can they decide to retry or they decide to, to to not update at all but i'm available so now let's flip it so that's the 
AP availability, right? The AP. I am part, I told the partitions, but I'm available. So the flip of the coin here is when you, let's take the same example, but I wanted a consistent system. A right comes to my master and I apply the changes to my read, uh, the, the right ahead log, my wall changes, my journal, uh, my read all logs. And I, it, I don't commit, I don't tell the user you're done, no. I let the user block, I block the user. And synchronously, while this is happening, I call the, the first replica and I call the second replica. And I say, right, right. And I, the client is doesn't, I did not tell the client, hey, you're good. No, I, I let the client wait. So I write to the first replica and says, did the replica reply? Yes. Okay. The replica is yeah. Or until all of them says, yes, 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 commit, 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 and I will reply to the user. And I say, your, your write has been completed. I'm fully consistent in this case. Why? If someone tried to read while I'm writing, they're going to get the old result. And that's fine because it's, it's still consistent. I didn't say that the read write committed. You gotta wait. But until all of these commits happen successfully, any read that happens from anywhere in my system is gonna be consistent. But are we available? Well, if everything goes happy dandy dandy, then sure. But I'm tolerating partitioning. This can fail. A network error can happen while synchronously update that. And you get a choice. You have two choices as a, as a designer of the system. You can fail the write, thus you're still unavailable, but you're still consistent too. You're gonna get the old results, which is consistency to me, but you're no longer available because, hey, you just failed my write. You're not available. The other choice is to retry. Hey, I, I wrote to this primary and i'm trying to write to one two three sexy 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 the final node i'll try to write to it and it failed so you can choose to fail like the first situation but you can also choose to retry hey retry 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 and eventually it will be succeeding right you will eventually succeed so you can continue retrying until eventually you're going to succeed but you're still not available because that's another thing that Eric has expanded upon after 12 years. Says, okay, yeah, if I retry, then my system technically is available, but it, the latency just does not uh, uh, justify the availability because you are so slow. So I'm going to consider you unavailable or eventually available, right? So he didn't like to use the eventually available because it's going to be silly, <laughs> right? Oh, eventually consistent, eventually available. Because that, that's what it is. Even in case of free tries, you're going to be slow. And that in that case, you're also not available. That's, that's the definition here. So you're consistent, you're partition tolerant. So CP, and then you're not essentially available, right? So... You can either be AP, available, and you're tolerating partition. You can be CP, oh my God. consistent and partition, tolerant. And you can also be CA, consistent and available, if you can guarantee that no matter what, you will not tolerate. You are a badass you do not have partition in your system at all i have a single beautiful machine it's beefy one uh, three terabyte of ram 64 core and it's a single beefy machine so it is consistent and available all the time and i don't have any partitioning i don't have i cannot tolerate any partition. so you have these two and that's basically what asset system when you look at this kind of thing is part of his asset right now within this beefy single machine you can still have partitioning if you are connecting to a device like a nas drive which has multiple uh disk drive and you write mul to multiple disks that's 
kind of a similar thing but you're not having physical machines you're having one single machine that does the work but the array of a storage is also partitioned what do you do in that case is does the cap theorem applies there actually maybe it does i don't know but if you think about it the cap theorem can apply and it really depends where are you looking across the stack so so when you're zoomed in to a single node you can get a uh, a consistent available system and when you zoom out you could be an available partition system but not consistent but within a single machine you are consistent when you issue a rate so one confusing here is the consistency in acid atomicity consistency isolation and durability is different than the consistency what we're talking about which is the reads consistency in acid is within the same data stealth right hey uh, i have a unique primary key here that has to be unique so if i insert multiple things that has the same name you have to fail please guarantee that my data is consistent hey i have a foreign key that points to a single value if i delete that please cascade all and delete all the relevant keys right so, so don't leave orphan rows so that's what consistency really means here another that form of the consistency is an asset that you have to maintain some 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 time at that level is uh, so you have a picture with a field called number of likes let's say instagram and you have another table that has all the people who actually like the picture so if you sum the id of the people of all the people who like this picture it better equal to this actual count that's also consistent with the data it has nothing to do with the reads itself you essentially you don't you want to avoid corruption at that level if you get a consistent acid the consistency in acid is really nasty you don't want it the consistency in read in in the cap theorem you can't tolerate it pun intended right you can tolerate the consistency when you read something yeah well caitlin jenner this picture has like 3.2 million likes if you got 3.1 million likes who cares right it's not really big deal but if you have a discrepancy in a banking system where you, the month the number of transactions doesn't sum up to the actual account ugh, bad or bad or this guy very bad all right guys uh, that's it for me today i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome oh, goodbye